Good morning, Austin. Thank you. We are calling to order meeting number 270 of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission on May 29th, 2019 at 9, 10 a.m. at our offices at 101 Federal Street here in Boston. Commissioner Zuniga, good morning. He is traveling on business and will be participating in our meeting by phone. Commissioner Zuniga, can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can hear you just fine, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning, and we can hear you clearly as well. Um, if for any reason, um, Enrique, for some reason you can't hear us, please alert us immediately and we'll make sure to uh, properly connect you. Since Commissioner Zuniga will be, oh, okay, thank you. Since Commissioner Zuniga will be participating remotely, all votes taken at this meeting will be uh, roll call votes. Before we begin with um, item number two, I just wanted to um, make a statement. Uh, yesterday, the Gaming Commission did receive payments totaling $35.5 million from Wynn Resorts satisfying the two fines imposed by the Commission in its decision dated April 30th, 2019. Going forward, the Commission will ensure compliance with the additional conditions that we imposed, but most importantly, we look forward to um, the June 23rd opening of Encore Boston Harbor. Questions, however, have been um, asked about how the fines will be processed. They are handled similarly to gross gaming revenue, and the allocations of funds is determined by the gaming law. The money is deposited into the gaming revenue fund and then distributed to a range of funds that benefit transportation, local aid, infrastructure, education, public health, tourism, and community mitigation. The details on um, these allocations are provided on the revenue page of our website. Uh, General Counsel Blue, is there anything that you'd like to add to that to cl further clarify? No, I think that exactly covers it. Okay, thank you. So. Now I think we can begin with um, our agenda, item two, administrative update. Yes, good morning, uh, Chair, good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, and good morning, uh, Commissioner Zuniga. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> um, so, uh, Chair, as you said, staff is also working very hard to prepare for the June 23rd opening. I don't have a general update today, but I will next week um, want to introduce a whole host of new staff, including licensing folk, gaming agents, uh, gaming enforcement unit folks, um, and other folks who have joined us. I haven't done this in a while. I usually would do it at a r routine tempo. We've been busy, so I'd like to do it at our, at our next um, meeting, which I anticipate may be as early as next week, um, and uh, let you know what we have been doing to get ready for the opening. Um, so that is all I have for today. Thank you. As well, just to remind uh, both the commission and the public, we also do have an agenda setting meeting this afternoon where I anticipate we will talk about the rest of the meetings probably up to and through opening in June. And that's at 2. At 2 o'clock, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, um, Executive Director Bedrosian. Item number three, Ombudsman Ziemba and Construction Oversight Manager Delaney. We have two items on our agenda today that have um, appeared on our May 22nd agenda for Encore Boston Harbor for possible votes. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, up for consideration today are two items the Commission discussed at its May 6, 2019 meeting. Material changes to the Encore Boston Harbor project since design approval and the draft second amended section 61 findings. Joining me today for the discussion are Joe Delaney, the, co the commission's construction project oversight manager, Mina Macarios, outside counsel for the commission from the law firm of Anderson and Krieger, Encore Boston Harbor president, Robert DeSalvio, and Jackie Crum, Encore Boston Harbor senior vice president and general counsel. Uh, in the commission packet are updates to the materials that were included in the May 6th packet uh, the material changes memo in today's packet is, in essence, an excerpt of the memo the Commission saw a few weeks ago. The excerpt deletes a reference to a section on other project-related changes in the original memorandum 
as no vote on such non-project related changes is expected. Specifically, included in the discussion of other project related changes were descriptions of two off-site parking lots in Everett. We do not believe that the Commission needs to vote on these items. Also, language regarding gaming positions from the May 6th memo has been deleted. We will discuss gaming positions during our Section uh, 61 discussion today and during the Commission's deliberations about the issuance of the Encore Boston Harbor Operations Certificate in the next few weeks. For example, the Commission will likely discuss gaming positions when it discusses the approval of the gaming floor and when the Commission reviews the form of the Operations Certificate itself which will include a reference to the number of slots and table games. The Commission's packet also includes a red line showing the difference between the draft second amended Section 61 findings we reviewed a few weeks ago and a new version before the Commission today. The only change slash substantive change to the May 6th language is four new sentences in a footnote on page five. This footnote describes that then when now Encore's notice of project change filing in 2017 showed reductions in the anticipated traffic impact compared to the previous Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act, MEPA, filing, the second supplemental final environmental impact report, which incorporated standards from the supplemental final environmental impact report. Despite such reduction in anticipated traffic, Encore Boston Harbor did not propose any changes to the previously determined mitigation measures. The footnote also discusses, discusses the potential impact of this on gaming positions. As you recall, at the May 6th meeting, the Commission determined that it would put out a request for comments on the second amended Section 61 findings. By the deadline, the Commission received no comments on the substance of the Section 61 findings. At the May 6th meeting, the Commission also heard some testimony from Council Jackie Crum regarding the methodology for counting gaming positions for the purpose of the Section 61 findings. At the time, it was explained that Encore Boston Harbor would reach out to MEPA staff to brief them about the issue. Encore Boston Harbor did reach out to both MEPA and MassDOT staff. Encore Boston Harbor also included a memo in your packet further explaining the methodology to count gaming positions. This memorandum does not reference any opinions of MEPA or MassDOT staff regarding gaming positions as we did not receive any official comment from these agencies as of the end of the day yesterday. However, we do note that we just received comments uh, within the last hour from MassDOT. They have also been included uh, in, in your packet. Uh, Commissioner Zuniga, uh, uh, we emailed those to you. I just wanted to make sure that you received that email this morning. I did, John, and uh, thank you. I, uh, I have what I believe are all the packet materials. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, because the item of gaming positions was part of both the material changes memorandum and the Section 61 memorandum, we have asked Encore Boston Harbor General Counsel Jackie Crum to provide further thoughts on the process for counting gaming positions. Thus, before getting into the specifics of the material changes memo or the draft section 61 findings, let me turn it over to Jackie to continue the conversation on gaming positions. After the discussion of gaming positions, uh, I recommend that the commission then consider the material changes memo, which no longer references gaming positions, and the draft section, second amended section 61 findings which includes new language on gaming positions. And with that, let me turn it over to Jackie. Thank you, and good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as discussed in the May 6th hearing, since the notice of our project change, we have added, uh, or proposed to add, 88 slot machines and one poker table, which would increase our gaming positions from 4,421 to 4,515 gaming positions. Um, this is a 2.1% increase uh, compared to what was presented to MEPA and MassDOT uh, during our last MEPA filing, which was the uh, notice of project change. We do not feel that this will have a material impact on the traffic generation and associated mitigation 
uh, in part because uh, our traffic mitigation and uh, our traffic mitigation was based on the filing uh, that we put forth in our SFEIR, SFEIR, that is our supplemental final environmental impact report which we filed in February of uh, 2015. In that filing, we proposed 4,580 gaming positions. Uh, obviously, the current proposal is below that number on which our mitigation and off-site infrastructure improvements was based. Uh, as previously discussed, the formula that we utilized for the purpose of our MEPA filings was one position per slot machine and an average of six positions per table. It was recognized that this was an average as uh, we didn't have the exact break, break out of the uh, gaming tables and so some tables would take more and others would take less. It also took into account the fact that our VIP tables will typically only have one to two players on them at most. Uh, as you may know, our, um, our VIP tables um, are in separate salons, many of them, and some salons have two tables and players will typically go back and forth between the two tables. It's highly unlikely that any of those tables will be fully occupied or utilized at their capacity. Um, subsequently, uh, in January of this year, the uh, Gaming Commission adopted a separate formula for the calculation of actual gaming positions. Uh, this was primarily for use uh, in determining the allocation of the budget between the uh, gaming licensees. In this formula, um, the gaming positions, for example, for a craps table is 14, uh, 14 gaming positions and 10 positions for each poker table. Notably, our poker tables uh, do not have room for 10 players. They only have room for nine players. Um, in addition, our craps tables are the, not the large ones that would easily accommodate 14 players. They are the smaller tables. So there is that uh, issue that we, we would need to uh, determine with respect to the actual number. Uh, despite the use of the same term, uh, the gaming positions terms, we, we feel that these are distinct. Uh, one is an average and one is the actual. Uh, we did receive a letter, as uh, Ombudsman Ziemba noted earlier, from um, Lionel Lucian at uh, MassDOT this morning. And he concluded that the addition of a poker table and 88 slot machines would not result in a significant change to the project's trip genera generation and associated transportation mitigation. He also noted that the actual number of gaming positions could vary depending on the type of game. Uh, I think that was an acknowledgement that they, uh, that actual is different from the average that they employed uh, during the MEPA process. Can I just ask how many seats are at your crafts table, if not the 14? Uh, crafts tables don't actually have physical But seats. the space, I mean. Uh, what would you say? Nine. Nine instead of 14? Probably about nine. Yeah. So, um, we're here to uh, present this to you and, and uh, would appreciate your consideration regarding the addition of these uh, slot machines and the, and the one table. I should also note that uh, for the poker tables, we have 14 poker tables that are in our tournament room, which would only be used for tournament purposes. Okay. Um, Ombudsman Ziemba, you, uh, I'm, do, I'm sorry, do you want to finish your presentation? And um, if we that's can okay. Ask? Yeah, please do. Uh, because I'm just trying to frame, even though they are separate matters before the commission, the material ch changes memorandum and the section 61 findings, as I was noting, the issue of gaming positions had some uh, relation to both. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I was hoping to do now is give you a little bit of uh, the detail on the material changes memorandum, and then we could finalize uh, the section 61 findings if, if that is okay. Okay, so commissioners, uh, uh, now to the material changes memorandum. Uh, at the commission's May 22nd meeting, uh, the commission just heard from Encore Boston Harbor representatives and Joe Delaney about the status of the project. Let me just turn it over to Joe to see if he has anything to add here. Thank you. <clears throat> um, essentially, the, the memo that we uh, presented back on May 6th, the, the changes that were outlined in there are still the changes, there's nothing further. Uh, beyond that, um, just as a matter of a couple of updates, one of the things that we talked about was employee parking, where uh, Encore had secured 400 parking spaces and was working to secure an additional 400. Um, those negotiations are still ongoing with the MBTA and the owner of the parking lot over at Station Landing. 
And Oh, sure. We have Just a quick update on that. We were able to, uh, the, the developer who has a portion of their garage was able to find an additional 300 parking spaces uh, to provide to us. So we are going to be able to get uh, at least 700. They're going to continue their negotiations with the MBTA for any additional spaces as well. Sorry. To Thank you. No, great. That's great. Um, and then the other uh, item was the battery backup system that we talked about. Uh, we're not sure if that will be ready by opening. Uh, maybe not, uh, but it shouldn't affect the opening, and it wasn't an original requirement of the project. So um, they're pursuing it. It will get done, but it just may not happen by opening. Thank you. Uh, any further update on the temporary daycare? Yes. So we have met with um, both the provider, and the provider has agreed to accept kids uh, into their program at other locations pending our opening. Uh, in, to supplement that as well, we have met with an organization called Care.com, mm -hmm. and we've been able to negotiate a discounted rate for um, for parents seeking um, uh, somebody to come in on an emergency basis, or they, we've also negotiated a, a program where it'll provide uh, parents with introductions and admission support to get into different daycares within their uh, neighborhoods to, during the interim period. And is there someone in HR who helps them coordinate in terms of getting into the temporary facilities? We will have somebody who, who is doing that and working directly with care.com. So it's actually a program that we sign up to, and then our employees will have direct access to care.com people as well as obviously going through our HR department. And then in terms of liaisoning with the daycare provider, in terms of getting temporarily into their other locations? Yes. Yes. Also? We have someone. Yeah. Okay. June 20. Oh, oh, the actual for the. the yeah, end of the year is most likely. Yep. Yeah. We hope before then. Um, part of it is their ability to, they're federally funded as well, so part of their ability is to go through the process and make sure that they've gone through uh, all the permitting that they need to do after we've turned the facility over. So they've asked us to uh, make sure we include enough time for them to get all of that done. And one additional comment on that, we've already secured and leased the space and the demolition of the former restaurant that was in the space is already completed. Um, so now we're actually finishing up the design documents and going out to bid for final pricing. But this thing is well underway already. I didn't want you to think that it hasn't started yet. It's already been demoed, the space. And one of the, one of the things that we really appreciate about the group that we've partnered with is not only do they provide typical daycare uh, facilities, they also provide uh, supports for uh, children who have special needs or uh, need assessment or whatever right in their facility itself. So it's a little bit more than um, just a plain daycare. It's got that supplemental uh, structure as well. Right. Are your new employees asking about this and you're, you're able to give them information? We have had uh, some inquiries, uh, fairly limited inquiries. We really wanted to lock down the program um, with care.com mm -hmm. and then we're going to, during mass orientation, we're going to make sure that all of our employees are aware of the benefits that are offered to them and can take advantage of it. How, do, how, does, the, uh, how does the daycare, because you're a 24 7 operation, help parents who might be on that second or third shift? I mean, I'm assuming this is not a 24 hour. Right, so, so our, our current daycare would not be, the one that's under construction would not be 24-7. Right. Right. However, we are looking into extended hours for that. Uh, we're hoping to keep the CareDoc Care program in place after the, uh, after the opening of the daycare center because that would give parents an additional resource. One of the things that we have noticed, frankly, is that a lot of parents choose the, t choose the night shift, for instance, because they do have childcare uh, during that, that time. So it, it allows them a little bit more flexibility, but we're hoping that the care.com care program would kick in and uh, provide any supplemental help that, that those families may need. Thank you. So uh, with that, if there are no questions, I recommend that the commission approve of the material changes included in your packet. As I noted earlier, the commission will have an opportunity to vote on gaming position related items. Uh, when it convenes to discuss the approval of the gaming floor and the issuance of the operations certificate. Can I, can I just ask a question about that? Um, sure. So I know that we, um, it was important for DO, uh, for uh, MassDOT to weigh in. Yes. Which they have now. Yep. And then they're suggesting that um, 
uh, consult with MEPA, but that's already been done, correct? So I met with MEPA, Joe and I met with MEPA some weeks ago. Uh, they were not um, concerned about the change. Their view was not to speak for MEPA, obviously, but their view was please go speak to MassDOT. Once you hear from MassDOT, let us know if they disagree, and, and so obviously we'll forward this memorandum to, or this email to MEPA, notify them and, and notify you okay. if there's any issue. So we're waiting to vote on this until those final T's get crossed? Is that? Uh, yes and no. So in the Section 61 amendments, uh, there's provision that authorizes the commission to, um, that permits the commission to authorize the additional gaming positions. And that would be filed immediately this week. We need to file it by the uh, MEPA filing deadline. Mm -hmm. So that references uh, the additional gaming positions. But um, well, what I'm recommending is that that the commission will finalize its gaming position totals uh, when it when it discusses the operations certificate and or the game, gaming floor plan. And that would give the opportunity for uh, Encore to uh, give the benefit of the, of the email to uh, MEPA to close the loop on that. And we could finalize uh, all the positions at that time. Is that, uh, does that work with your uh, opening plans? That, that, that plan? does. Thank okay. you. But no, on two on page five is the vote on the section 61's that findings. So, so this is just the memorandum regarding the um, the changes. Just the changes. Just the changes, and in, in a second I'm going to get into the we'll get second the amendment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Further discussion and questions for. My apologies. Uh, further uh, questions for um, Ombudsman Ziemba on this matter. And this is with respect to, uh, we want to make sure we don't overlap these issues, um, the material changes to the final design of the Encore Boston Harbor project. <clears throat> do we have a motion? Because I do, you need a vote on this today. Do we have a motion at this time? Uh, Madam Chair, I would move that the Commission approve the described material changes to the final design of the Encore Boston Harbor project. Uh, however, that such approval shall not be construed to supersede or otherwise impact or impair any obligations pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 23K to the Commission's Section 61 findings as they may be amended from time to time or to the conditions of Encore Boston Harbor's license including but not limited to condition number 14 relative to compliance with the information included in the application filed by the designated licensee and the evaluation reports filed by the Commission, uh, or to relieve Bo Encore Boston Harbor from providing prior notice to the Commission of any future changes to the design for the Commission's review and approval, and to demonstrate that the Commission has made any determinations specified in 205 CMR 135.062 and 205 CMR 151. Second. Um, <clears throat> before we, we take a roll call vote, uh, Commissioner Zuniga, do you have any further questions? And I want to make sure you can hear us properly. I have no uh, questions or comments, Madam Chair. Okay, great. So no further discussion. Um, we have to take a roll call vote. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Five zero, please. Thank you, Catherine. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. I now turn to the draft second amended Section 61 findings. Um, as we noted, the only substantive change to the prior draft is the addition of footnote 2 on page 5, which reads as follows. Due to the reductions in traffic impacts described in the MPC and the fact that Wynn did not propose any changes to its previously committed traffic mitigation, 
which, ad which addressed greater traffic impacts associated with a higher number of gaming positions and larger retail footage presented in the SSFEIR, Win may have the ability to increase somewhat the actual number of gaming positions in the gaming establishment without creating adverse traffic impacts not already mitigated by the previously committed and implemented mitigation program. As such, the Commission may specify in the license or operation certificate for the gaming establishment such an increased number of gaming positions approved for opening. However, the Commission also exp expressly reserves the right to further limit the number of gaming positions, require additional study of environmental impacts, or require additional mitigation measures if the actual impacts associated with the gaming establishment upon opening or in the future differ from those described in the second amended Section 61 findings. Wins MEPA filings, the Secretary's certificate for each of these filings, or if another agency with jurisdiction, e.g. MassDOT, or the Secretary so requires. Nothing in the preceding sentence shall prevent the Commission's authority to reopen any mitigation measure pursuant to 205 CMR 127 or otherwise. Although the footnote states that the Commission may authorize the increase of gaming uh, positions in its operation certificate, as we discussed, uh, we have vehicles for the final approval of such increase. Thus, at the time the Commission considers the oper operation certificate in June, the Commission could weigh any further comments uh, it may receive from MassDOT Mass or MEPA. And further, the language specifies that the Commission reserves the ability to take actions such as limiting the gaming positions in the future if the actual impacts uh, differ from those described in these second amended Section 61 findings. And the Commission also has a more general ability to reopen a mitigation me measure under its regulations. Uh, if the Commission approves the second amended Section 61 finding, staff in Encore Bo Boston Harbor will both need to file them by May 31st so that they will appear in MEPA's June 10th, 2019 Environmental Monitor. And with that, I'll take any questions. Any questions? Commissioners? Um, no, I would no just, I, I would like to just um, understand this uh, clearly. I understand that we have saw Anderson Krieger and I haven't um, introduced myself properly, but nice to see you in the open meeting. Um, so it's my understanding, being somewhat new to the Section 61 findings process, that we would be executing a document today approving Section 61 findings, but there is a possibility of us reverting back to the findings to make a correction if we wanted to, and that's permissible under, I understand that there's some leeway under our regulations. Is that permissible under statute? That's correct, yes. Could we, I'm um, just have. thank you. And please introduce yourself. I'm, I'm uh, going a little bit out of order, but I just wanted to clarify. Good morning, Madam Chair. Mina Macarius, Anderson and Krieger. Uh, the, Question you asked is whether you, we could, the Commission could um, reopen mitigation essentially um, under MEPA, not just under its own regs. And the answer is yes. Section 61 findings happen at the conclusion of the MEPA process, which here ended with the Notice of Project Change and Notice of Project Change Certificate. Um, and they're in, the purpose of the Section 61 findings is for the agency to uh, say that it has seen enough mitigation for the license it is issuing and the impacts associated with it. So what you're weighing in on are the um, impacts and the mitigation. It, the Commission's actually going um, a bit above and beyond to even amend the prior Section 61 findings. You have Section 61 findings on the books. They've been amended once with a minor amendment. Given the development of the project uh, and, and following a similar course to what you did in Springfield, these uh, mostly restate um, the, the findings and update um, information that was in the, in, in the notice of project change, the NPC. So the short answer is yes, you can certainly reopen. The longer answer is uh, y even if you didn't do this today, you could reopen. And so today we heard from MassDOT in a positive way, but there is a possibility that we will still hear from MEPA. Um, it's, it's possible. It's possible, but yeah. we don't have an expectation necessarily. I know that you, oh, go ahead. 
I, I hope it's a positive response. <laughs> that's what we, that's the but indications we've received. You've been in communication yeah. with them, and that that's was when we last spoke um, in, a, in our last meeting on this matter. Mm -hmm. I, I think I said, you know, it was my understanding that you would be reaching out to MEPA. You've had some discussions. We've got received this um, positive email from MassDOT to clarify. Um, and, and, and I think I said to you in the open meeting, there may well be no issue here because of the fact that it isn't a significant change. And that seems to be the direction MassDOT is going in. So, you know, to the extent MEPA gets back, that will be reported in open meeting. But at this juncture, we could move forward based on footnote two, page five, which is our, okay. Any further questions? It's not uncomplicated. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Zuniga, do you have any questions? Uh, no, Madam Chair, I, I, uh, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Ombudsman Ziemba, do you wish to add anything for further clarity? Did I say, oh, I said Ziemba, not Zuniga, thank you. I do not. Okay, excellent. Thank you for your clarification. I appreciate it. Okay. And with that, I understand we need a vote again on this matter. Do we have a motion? Uh, we do, and, and forgive me in advance for the length of it. <laughs> um, this is the vote to adopt the second amended Section 61 findings and incorporate into Region A Category 1 gaming license. Project name Encore Boston Harbor, formerly known as Win Everett, Win Boston Harbor. Project location 1 Broadway, Everett, Massachusetts. Project proponent WinMass LLC, also known as Win. EOEEA number 15060, final agency action category 1 gaming license. Whereas on April 25th, 2016, the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, the Commission, voted to adopt the Commission's Section 61 findings of the 2016 Section 61 findings with respect to the Encore Boston Harbor project, known as the project, to grant to win the final region a category one gaming license to incorporate by reference the 2016 section 61 findings into Wynn's license for the project and to require as a condition of the license that Win comply with the terms, conditions, mitigation measures and other requirements identified in the 2016 section 61 findings. Whereas the commission expressly reserved the right to take further action with respect to the 2016 section 61 findings the license for the gaming establishment and any conditions contained in the 2016 Section 61 findings or the license for the gaming establishment. Whereas on or about February 28, 2017, Wynn filed a notice of project change, known as the NPC, regarding a sediment remediation plan for a portion of the project site and an adjacent area of the Mystic River with the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, EOEEA's Mass Environmental Policy Act, MEPA office, Whereas on April 7, 2017, the Secretary of EOEEA issued a certificate on the NPC in which the Secretary determined that Wynn's proposed project changes did not require the submission of additional filings under MEPA, the NPC certificate. Whereas on July 13, 2017, the Commission approved an amendment to the 2016 Section 61 findings to address a minor modification of one condition in the 2016 Section 61 findings with respect to the Mystic River Pedestrian Bicycle Bridge Feasibility Study but without otherwise addressing the findings in the NPC or the NPC certificate, known as the first amended Section 61 findings. Whereas Wynn has proposed the second amended Section 61 findings attached here too to reaffirm Wynn's commitment to avoid or minimize impacts to the environment of the project and to update the 2016 Section 61 findings and the first amended Section 61 findings. Now, therefore, I move the Mass Gaming Commission one approve the proposed modifications and refinements to the project described in the NPC, the NPC certificate, the first amended section 61 findings and the second amended 61 findings attached here to, two, to adopt the second amended section 61 findings regarding the project in the form attached here to pursuant to the Mass Environmental Policy Act, General Laws Chapter 30, subsection 61 through 621, General Laws Chapter 23K, section 15, sub 12, 301 CMR 11.0, 12 and 205 CMR 120.02 to update and restate the 2016 Section 61 findings and the first amended Section 61 findings. Number three, 
that they find that we find pursuant to general law chapter 30 section 61 and 301 CMR 11.12 sub 5 that all feasible measures have been taken to avoid or minimize impacts to the environment of the project for the reasons stated in the Commission's second amended section 61 findings attached here to and all other documents approvals and certifications incorporated by reference therein number four incorporate by reference pursuant to general law chapter 30 section 61 through 620 Sorry, sorry, 61 through 62 I. General Law Chapter 23 K, uh, subsections 4, sub 15, section 15, sub 12, and 21 C, 301 CMR 11.12, sub 5, sub B, 205 CMR 120, and the Commission's second amended 61 findings attached or two into WIND's license for the project and require as a condition of the license that WIND comply with the terms, conditions, mitigation measures, and other requirements identified in the Commission's section. Second amended section 61 findings. Number five, authorize the commission to execute the commission's second amended section 61 findings in the form attached here to. Number six, authorize the commission's general counsel to take all necessary procedural actions to effectuate the commission's second amended section 61 findings. And in accordance with the Mass Environmental Policy Act, the Game Mass Gaming Act, and the regulations implementing each statute. And lastly, number seven, require as a condition of the license a regular quarterly review by the Commission of WINS compliance with the Commission's second amended section 61 findings and the terms and conditions of the license. Second. <laughs> <laughs> would anybody need that repeated? <laughs> <laughs> what was Bruce, would he have to oblige? <laughs> Commissioner Zuniga, we're having a little fun here. Can you hear? Could you hear Commissioner O'Brien? I just need a few more seconds to finish reading the closed caption, but I, I uh, <laughs> have no emotion. They're catching up? <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, again, a roll call vote is needed. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Five zero, Catherine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes my report. Excellent. Uh, all right, we're moving on to our next item then. Commissioner updates. Commissioner Cameron, do you have an update? I do not, Madam Chair. Commissioner O'Brien? Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, I have one quick update. Uh, I'm uh, honored to be speaking at the uh, Cambridge College uh, Gaming School graduation this coming Saturday. I think it's June 1st. So that is chance excellent. to see all the graduates. I think I mm -hmm. precede uh, Mr. DeSalvio on the agenda, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. We had a chance to visit the gaming school and uh, Director Griffin and I, and it was uh, a pretty impressive operation. They were even even using surveillance cameras over the tables to be able to go back and show students some of the things that they missed or some of you had tried to cheat while they were dealing. So uh, very impressed, looking forward to it. Austin, do you think you can make yourself available to stream uh, the commissioner's speech for us? <laughs> Stay you. home, Austin. <laughs> it, it's a Saturday. Well, thank you. That's really nice. Commissioner Zuniga, do you have any updates? Uh, not, not really, uh, Madam Chair. I will provide an update on the conference that I'm currently attending one time back uh, in the office and, and uh, in, a, in a meeting uh, uh, in person. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Barring no further business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All the, oh, a roll call. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Five zero, Catherine, thank you.